Good morning. This is another midweek edition of Every Trade Behind the Build. No Hollywood this week. Hopefully, he's back at HQ on Friday. He's on his holidays, sunning himself. So you're stuck with me and the DJI. And I'm also editing. So forgive me if the quality is not as polished as it usually is. Normal service should be resumed on Sunday's episode. So what I'm going to do is take you along with me on a typical couple of days in the life of me, Chris, from Every Trade. And this is Every Trade Behind the Build, episode 51. So yes, a bit old school in the car filming. So this episode, there's no Hollywood, there's no videographer, there's me and the DJI, and obviously Dale and his phone. I'm gonna put an episode together based on that. Wanna be consistent, it could have been easily easy to just go, you know what, let's miss another Wednesday, don't need to put an episode out. But I don't wanna do that, I wanna tell the story, warts and all, what it's like, the reason I set out to start this YouTube channel. So, what am I doing today? I'm gonna go over to the grab and aggregates yard. The dig is back off his whatever he's been doing. We were lent into a company down south, but yeah, they're not paid actually. So yeah, he's back. So I'm gonna catch up with him and we're really, really gonna push this yard hard now. As I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, we've done a deal with uh, the yard adjacent to ours and we're gonna merge our existing yard with that next door and also take on another bit of a yard next to ours as well so we're really putting some energy and some money into this now i love this side of things i love the idea of getting paid to remove waste and repurposing it and selling it back out i also love the idea as you guys know of looking after ourselves being our own customer we were spending loads of money on grabs we were spending loads of money buying aggregates in for our jobs when now we can literally serve ourselves. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna catch up with the dig, uh, see how he's getting on the yard, see what his plans are for this week, and then try and bottom out this plan to get us into that yard next door. That's gonna take a while. We've negotiated <clears throat> a six month rent free period, which you can do when you take on commercial units. So any of you guys looking to take a unit on or anything like that, I imagine a lot of you guys have already got your own unit, but it can be quite daunting. I remember getting my first office uh, when was it now? Back in 2009, we'd literally been in business for two weeks. We were working, me and my uncle, Uncle Paul, working from my uh, spare bedroom. And my missus at the time kept coming in and my little daughter was running in. It just was hard to feel professional and we literally had no work. So he said, we need an office. And I was like, oh, don't, do we need that over? And we just went for it, found a little office. Um, and never really looked back, moved about five times in about four years, went to a unit, got a unit, and we outgrew that really quickly as well, but we stuck firm. And then, in about 2014, KTM had just come into the business and there was a lot of like inefficiency, just went too big too quickly, which I've talked about before. So we shrunk back and we got some serviced offices in a mill. It was literally, I think it was 400 quid a month and it was just me, enough room for two desks and me and KTM, no window in it or anything like that. But it was great. We got the business nice and lean again. And then, me being me, we went again, got a bigger office, and then we moved to our premises that we've got now, which is this, that, so that's HQ. And again, I, when we got into that, I thought, there's no way we'll outgrow this. It's gonna be, um, it's, it's perfect, it's the right size for us. But we did, we, um, we, we, we've we been probably too big for that premises at HQ now we've got there for three or four years. So we've took on the little storage uh, unit we've got hidden away in Stockport um, and we've got the grab and aggregates yard. Ideally, I wanna get everything centrally located my vision my dream is to have all the offices in one place the grab and aggregate side running from there selling some materials stocking ourselves having dale his own workshop with maybe people working under him doing a little bit of plant hire crusher hire 
that kind of thing, all from one place where I can sit and look over everything. Obviously, we can't really bring preferred over because that's based in Liverpool and that's where its customer base is, but that is my vision, that's my dream. So yeah, what a little brief history there. Of, uh, there's loads I could tell you guys. I had this idea, when we get maybe uh, to 10,000 or maybe more, I'll give you a really deep dive on how the business got started and how we got going. And it might not be for everyone, and I know not everyone likes these really talkative bits, but it's good because it's when it's just me and the camera, that's when I feel most relaxed and, um, yeah, unguarded and I, I kind of reminisce. I love reminiscing. I mean, I'm so proud of what we've done. Like, sometimes I remember what it was like in the early days, just me and my uncle doing a job. He'd do it, I'd stand there and watch him. That's it, basically. And then I'd go to the car and get a tool or something. I mean, I can do a bit and, I, I, you know, there was a time when I was, I remember I was digging holes and concreting and all sorts and I can do it. But I, I think we quite quickly thought, scale this up to make it actually into a proper business. I needed to come off the tools and he needed and, and, and to find the work to organize the work to find tradesmen to put round my uncle and he did it and my uncle took up a lot of slack in them early day, days did everything and yeah it's a shame really I don't really speak to him much now uh, just because he's moved away and that's life in it I was really close to him he's like a father figure to me but Alex who you met a couple of weeks ago is his son and he, he's the one with the physics degree. He's now come to work for us, which is nice. And I feel like I want to invest loads of effort and time and energy and money into Alex in a way to sort of repay back what his dad, my uncle Paul, did for me. Because I wouldn't be here now talking to you if it wasn't for my relationship with Paul and him taking a leap, leap of faith on me because he was getting job offers left, right and centre. But yeah... So yeah, I'm going to go to the yard, get a bit of an action plan with the dig, maybe go and speak to the landlords of the yard next door and try and get this over the line. Because sometimes you can get deals and you, they don't get over the line. This is generally in business. You've got to force the deal over the line. You've got to make it happen. And I'd say that's something I'm quite good at. So is Alex. He's just taking action and getting things done, getting things over the line, pushing it forward before people change their mind, basically. Uh, and then I'm going to go over to Project 849 and try and show you a bit from there. I don't know what this episode is going to be like. I don't know how entertaining it's going to be. I don't know how long it's going to be. I'm going to edit it. I edited the end of Sunday's video. It's going quite well that now, eventually after a slow start. So thanks very much for watching that. If you want to get into property, you're a builder or you're already in property, I think you'll really like the episode. So if you've not watched it, get it watched. So yeah, I'm going to go over to Project 849, show you a bit there, see what's what, and who knows where we'll end up. So yeah, thanks for watching. So, I'm in the grab and aggregates yard, which is actually tidier than I thought it'd be, considering the dig has not been here. So, yeah, basically, we've had a little um, change around. What we've done is we've put the bays in a line, which, looking back, we should have done anyway. Obviously, this is a temporary setup. We knew it would be a temporary setup because we knew that we had deals to do with other parts of the yard. But, yeah, we've put the bays in in a row so that the drivers can load themselves. What we had, we had them at funny angles so that they couldn't get the grab in to load the stone onto the truck. So we had to get someone that could operate the digger over it to load them. So now the drivers can sort of self-service themselves if the dig or somebody isn't here to load them. There's my uh, trusty conveyor. More on that in a bit, actually. But yeah, it's uh, I don't think a yard ever looks tidy tidy, but anyone that runs a yard knows what I mean. It is pretty tidy by yard standards, by our yard standards anyway. So yeah, I'm gonna have a little wander around, have a catch up with the dig and see what's what. So yeah, just to show you there, over here, you'll see that this was where we used to crush into, but again, it's in a really bad position. You couldn't get near it to load it. So we've cleared this now, and we're gonna extend this bay over the other side. So all the aggregates will be in one row, like most yards, but we've kind of just built this as we've been going. You know what? I'm looking about. I'm just waiting for the dig to sort something in there. I'm proud of what we've got here, you know. It looks, we've got, we own a lot of gear. I'll show you now. We own a lot of gear. Let me see if we can turn this round. How do you do it? 
I think it's three clicks in it. Look. We own quite a lot of stuff. We've built this over time. It's not all happened overnight. We've put a lot of money into it. But, like I said from the very first episode, this is what I'm like. So, yeah. It's looking quite tidy. You can see here that the Trommel is doing its job. Essentially, we've been loading from this pile here into the Trommel there. This hardcore flies out the drum. And I think my idea is, and I don't know whether this is possible, that that stuff will fall into the conveyor hopper and then into the crusher. So, yeah. Crush is back. Dave doesn't need it anymore now because he's got his own. But yeah, we own quite a bit of gear, a bit of plant. I know a lot of you guys like the yard stuff, and some of you guys are not interested because our channel's just mad in it. We um, let me see if I can get you back. Our channel's mad, really, in it. It's like it's got a bit of everything. It's got mechanical stuff in there. Who would have thought it? But yeah, it's um. I like it because I like the variety, that's the type of content I like watching. Hopefully we'll find our niche, find our market, but yeah, here's another one. Turn you around again. The Wackanoosen, needs to clean that. I've owned that for a few years, lovely machine that. So yeah, we've got a lot to get through. So, I'll go and have a chat with the dig. I might go and speak to the landlord of next door. And if I think that we're finally the where we need to be on that, I'll try and show you what our plans are for that. It's exciting, honestly. I'm in heaven here. Got such big plans. And I cannot wait to share them with you guys because you guys hold us accountable. Love it. <laughs> but the lads have set up a little production line here which is mega so what we've got is we've got Dale screening there on the big machine scooping up the mixed stuff which is a combination of soil hardcore bit of clay putting that into the trommel which in turn is then firing out the hardcore pretty clean hardcore there and then the dig is then putting that through the crusher, which is now leading, loading the conveyor onto the baby grab at the moment, because we haven't got a big enough dumper. But that kind of works, that's fine. We can move it about the yard, but we're working on that. I'm gonna get a few more conveyors, I think, because I can see how this will work perfectly with conveyors. This is mega. So pleased with this. We're just doing a bit of R&D at the moment. This is not exactly how we're going to set it up. But basically, as I said before, I've done a deal to get the other side of that yard there. So we're going to get all that yard there, including their own screener. And the part of the deal, we're going to process their stuff for them. Let's say use on their own uh, utility jobs. But then we'll then be able to reorganize the rest of our yard for aggregates. We're also getting a deal to do to use some of the yard that's out there already, which is already hard stored. So essentially we're gonna have a massive yard. I don't wanna to talk too much about yards because I look like I'm copying someone, but it's mega. I can just see exactly how this is gonna work. So good, so good, I feel like a kid. So yeah, I'm really happy with the work in the yard. It's progressing well, the dig is back. So I'm gonna get some food now, head over to Project 849, see how the boys are getting over there. But the weather is quite nice here. So I've asked the dig and Dale's here as well to get on with some soil screening now because you've got to make hay whilst 
Well, I would say the sun's shining, but it's not. But you've got to make hay when it's dry. Let's have it. Oh, my hair is so full of dust. It is dirty work in the yard. So, as fast as my plans have been made, they've been changed. I need to go back to HQ because there's an issue with a valuation for a job that we're doing. So basically, when you do a job, obviously you'll, every couple of weeks, every three weeks, whatever you do, every week, you'll put in what's called a valuation where you claim where you're up to on the job financially and you submit that to the client or to the client's representative and you argue it out and um, it's, it can be a really easy process or it can be a painful one this one's really easy to be fair but there's an error apparently and if I don't sort it out we will miss their pay run and we could also end up losing a little bit of money so I've had to change my plan I'm going to go to project 849 tomorrow I'm going to get back to my desk and work out what's going on it's an Excel based issue I think which is not necessarily my strong point but just go on Google or YouTube, don't you? Find out how to do it. So, um, yeah, but this is a prime example of how my day can evolve. I love it, to be honest. I'm addicted to the chaos, like I've said before. I like moving parts. I like problem solving. I just couldn't sit behind a desk all day and just do data inputting or something like that. But, yeah, back to HQ. Might speak to you again. If not, maybe see you tomorrow. So it's Tuesday and I'm on site at Project 849. I can't get used to this filming myself. I don't look good this close up. Here's what it is. I'll have to get used to it. So yeah, what I think I'll do is give you a little show round where we're up to because I know a lot of you guys have enjoyed the progress of this job and I'll try and show you a couple more of the sort of nitty gritty technical bits and uh, yeah, try and be informative. So yeah, let's go and have a look. So. Drainage boys are on site. Jamescape, nice digger. That we sprayed it. Got the boys in here. And they're basically going around the perimeter, excavating for all new drains that we're putting in. So that's progressing nicely. Got big water, the magic man there. Married man now, lady, sorry. So yeah, Uncle Terry's giving me a sandwich. Mm. See where we're up to. Both roofs are on, the extensions. It's really progressing well. Looks like a mess ex externally, but internally, I can just tell, I know where we should be on job like this. I can just tell that the boys are smashing it. Let's go inside. So I've come inside one of the units here. Let's have a look in here. All boarded ready for the doors and the window to go in and ready for the kitchen to go in the kitchens have been delivered got some of the doors in now and then if i show you we've got some of the furniture in which is has been made by preferred just mdf this is what the client specifies it's going to be painted, paint it in like an oil base paint because it'll uh, won't mark because anyone knows what MDF knows and it marks really bad. So yeah, when a room looks like this with basically skirting boards, door hung, architrave and the furniture, 
second fixed electrically as well i know that this is a good spot to be and the painters can come through and it makes a massive difference when the painters get it miscoated so let's go upstairs yeah this is good so you can actually now i can see paint on the walls which is good and in the bathroom let's turn it around the floor's been tiled so we've got these like aqua panels on which are good for landlord spec because you don't have to grout them and they'll last forever basically and they've got like a a ceiling system here that joints behind there so really in theory water should never get behind the back of them I'm not closing leaks got these like vertical bond metro tiles in like a green quite nice then what we have here it's gonna be a, so we've got a concealed system in there and we have a um, like a, a top that matches them there so, yeah, there's that to do. But yeah, this one's good. Again, painters are in here, just miscoating. This is, this makes such a difference. I think painters are undervalued, me. They honestly, they make a job. That's when it just feels like you can see the job coming together. But if you remember, less than a week ago, that window was in, but the walls reveals weren't plastered, the window board wasn't on, that's all done and dusted now. So what we've achieved in just a week here is amazing. But yeah, still loads to do and we've got 21 days left now, which isn't a lot, <laughs> isn't a lot, but we've got the labor here and I've just called KTM, we're gonna send some more reinforcements. But yeah, lot to do, man. So generally, I'm really happy with where these jobs are up to. Sean, aka Bizzle, is absolutely smashing it, but there is a lot to do. And I reckon we need to bolster our ranks here and get a few more men there, a couple more joiners, just to help with the second fix, because there's just a lot of it. So you're swinging doors, architraves, etc., going in now, and the fitted wardrobe's amazing, but we're just a little bit light on joinery. So, like Sean now has to drop back onto the tool where really he should be flying around the job troubleshooting it's lunch now so it's quite quiet it's always lunch when i get here um but yeah it's um it's in a good position but i know just from experience what needs to be done so yeah i'm going to um have a quick look around now just troubleshoot a couple of bits of the drainage and i'm going to head back I'm probably going to work from home this afternoon because i need to edit this episode <laughs> i'm having a very busy week for them fans love it everywhere you look it's vans right see you back at my home hq is 6.42 on Wednesday and your man has been up for at least 45 minutes trying to sort this edit out. Now, back in the day in my old job when I worked at ITV, if you don't know about that, maybe look a few videos back and tell my story of how we came from working in TV to owning this construction company and all the other bits that we do. I used to do a bit of editing and I liked it, but the computer was set up for it then where this, my lovely little Mac, just isn't set up. I think there's been smoke coming out the sides of it we miss you hollywood you need to get back asap but yeah i'm almost there but i forgot i'd not filmed anything 
to uh, wrap the video up. So yeah, I just thought I'd jump on and say thank you for bearing with us whilst Hollywood's been away. I know the standard of the video that we like to put out isn't as good as it could have been. Um, you know, but I still think that the important thing is that we got something out and we stayed consistent. I really want this channel to be just an insight into our companies, tell the story, give you the good things, give you the bad things, be honest always, and just watch us and hold us accountable whilst we're trying to grow these companies. I want you guys that maybe are trying to start your journey into construction, maybe you are you own a small <clears throat> company or maybe you're a tradesman and you, you want to get to that next level to benefit from the mistakes that we've made. And honestly, we've made loads. We just keep getting back on the horse and keep going because that's the key. Honestly, the secret to any success is just to start and keep going. There's no magic formula, not unless you're a genius or you can write code or something. But yeah, um, I just want to be honest. I want to be real. It's got me shooting it like this, like me being a bit more sort of a camera in front of me and stuff like that has got me thinking I want to maybe be a bit more personal with these videos I want to really sort of be a bit more granular what I've tried to do is just stitch together key events on other videos but really I want to try and take you with me and I have the confidence I really don't like the camera being that close to me I just don't like it I've got the old family double chin it's uh, it's, in, it's um, genetical and I don't like it but I've got to put that aside and realize that nobody really cares apart from me and just keep bringing on its content because this is such an exciting time for our companies what Alex and I have got planned is whether it succeeds or it fails either way it'll be a mad entertaining journey and I want to take you guys with us because honestly i've got to know you all on like not all but a lot of you guys on like a personal level because you've been messaging me and you know there's like such nice people um that have I, I, i'm not going to list them all because i know i'll miss someone but you know who you are consistently always give us positive feedback and that really has spurred us on to i don't think i would have been as keen to push the whole grab an aggregate side if had it not been for you guys like encouraging us and just you get, knowing that you guys expect us to to push. It's weird, really. It's you know we've had Alex and I have done quite well, and you know we could probably take our foot off the gas and just smell the roses. But we felt like we both were sort of, particularly me as well, because I'm getting older, because I'm like forty now. I know it's hard to believe. Um, we felt like we were stagnating a little bit, and just. It's been great to put us out there, put our ambitions, put our sort of goals out there and have you guys hold us accountable, like I keep saying. So, yeah, I won't bang on for ages. I'm going to try and get this video boxed. I've got to add this bit now and then hopefully my computer will be able to deal with the export or whatever you've got to do and I'll get it up at a decent time tonight. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think of this video. Let us know what you think of this style Obviously, you're going to get the odd troll. It is what it is. But hopefully, it's uh, it's been positive and you've enjoyed it. I've tried my hardest to just give you a bit of a snapshot into my into my days here every trade and all the other bits that we do. Come back on Sunday where normal service hopefully will be resumed. Alex is obviously shooting in Liverpool. We've got some good updates to bring you from over there and at Preferred. And then I will show you as much as I can in the new yard that's happening. That's really exciting. There's been a couple of developments this morning. Well, not this morning, but last night and that I found out about this morning, which I can't wait to bring you. I'll try and bring you on Sunday. We've managed to get some nice pieces of kit in the yard so and also i'll take you that back to project 849 where it's a, a big few weeks on site now to get it delivered for the client so yeah let me know if you like this if you're not subscribed because 50 percent of you are not subscribed please click subscribe if you like what we've done please like or share tell your friends i'm going to try and deliver the best construction property business related content there is out there just put our hearts on our sleeves and show you guys take you along for the journey have a great rest of the week guys and i will see you on sunday i think it's froze please